set the scene for us. I mean, you know, the overall depth of the draft, um, the, the early picks, who's who's predicted to go, you know, in the top three and, and some of the father sons that are involved. Sure. So for me, there's a really clear, distinct top two. So there's Jason Horn Francis and then and then there's Nick Dacos. For me, they could be two top 10 in the competition level midfielders. So they could be in that same sort of sentence as your Sam Walsh, Bailey Smith types. So um, I think you do really have that genuine top end. From now, there, though, now, the do, draft... you, do you just sorry to interrupt, but do you have a gap between them? Because you've, you've said there are I the do. top two. There are I a do. gap between those two to the rest, but are there a gap between those two? Yeah, so I do see quite a bit of separation between those two and the rest. So from there, you're either looking at some guys who are pretty good and should have good careers. So maybe you're Adam Chera sort of equivalents or thereabouts. And then you've got your high upside types where they might not make it or they could be superstars in the future. So um, two that could be those superstars of the future. You could look at a Sam Darcy, who's another, um, he's another father son. So Bulldogs, son of Luke. Um, as that sort of your tall key forward is around 205, 206 centimetres, long arms, um, is a late bloomer. So um, there's a lot of development in him. And then there's a Finn Callahan as well, where he's that really super athletic midfielder, 190 centimetres, moves like no one I've seen in traffic in terms of that speed agility, but he needs to develop that contested side and the tackling to, and that real sort of aggression to really become that, whether it's a bond or whatever it is. The thing that I wonder is, this is now the second year that we haven't been, or you guys haven't really been able to watch um, a lot of, especially in Vic Metro, these, these young kids go about it. And I remember interviewing um, a couple of, of people in list management last year for an article talking about the difficulties of trying to scout these guys without having the opportunity to. Um, now that this has happened for a second straight year, is, is that why you think there could be some of these hits and misses when, you, when you're sort of looking at form that may be two years old? Definitely. Yeah. Particularly with the Victorians as well, where we've only really had half a season. We haven't seen them. We haven't seen the second half of the season to see how they've developed. So there's a lot of guesswork there, but we haven't seen them against the other States either to really see how they compare. So um, yeah, with the Victorians in particular, and I felt the same last year, it's going to be very hit and miss. So um, yeah. So you might get some Victorian bargains, but others where you think they're going to be better and that's just a complete flop of a selection. So 